I've been going to Afghanistan pretty much on a yearly basis since 93. Um, I've made, you know, I don't know exactly how many trips, maybe 18 trips. This is the first trip to Afghanistan, which was in uh, the winter of 1993. I was in northern Afghanistan covering the, um, the refugee crisis. Uh, Tajikistan was erupting in civil war, and so there was a um, massive refugee problem. With, Tajiks fleeing the border of their country and, and coming over into Afghanistan and then setting up massive refugee camps for all these refugees. Afghanistan was going through its own civil war and I wanted to go down to Kabul, the capital, and, and photograph down there and see what was going on. I hitched a ride with uh, Med Sans Frontieres, the Doctors Without Borders group, and we drove down into Kabul, which was um, a city under siege. It was uh, being rocketed daily by various different factions fighting over for control of the city. This photograph here was of a, a Northern Alliance soldier who is um, holding an AK-47 assault rifle. He, it's, a, it's a portrait, it's a posed picture. But what I found interesting about this photograph was um, he uh, had prosthetic arms um, he'd lost both his arms um, while demining in the fields of Afghanistan and when he um, he got his um, his prosthetic arms um, he taught himself how to uh, shoot it says a lot about the war it says a lot about the absurdity of war and um, everything else that goes around it and um, and bravery and, and resilience and you know this this man was you know the ultimate um, image of you know the soldier I guess any war is really dangerous for journalists and, and photographers and and Afghanistan was was no uh, different to many of the other conflicts I've experienced I would say in some ways uh, I felt um, quite safe with with the people that I was with um, once you're aligned with um, you know the you know the leader or the the group that you're with they uh, generally look after you I and mean, you're a guest those boundaries changed over the years of course um, and particularly when the Taliban came into power they were very anti uh, press anti photographs anti just about everything basically <laughs> This photograph here was taken in 1995 and it's uh, a place called um, Juddy Maywan or Maywan Avenue which is down in the old city of Kabul. Um, this is the place or one of the places in Kabul that was the most heavily destroyed during the civil war so the whole place is just rubble. Um, Kabul was a very different place then, it was very quiet in many ways, especially in this area. And so a lot of people rode to work or went, you know, to do, go about their business on bicycle. Um, but they wouldn't really hang around here long. They would just use it as a way to go from one place to another. It was, you know, a very dangerous place to be sort of hanging in one spot for too long. Otherwise you would probably get shot. Having a vest and a helmet would make you more of a target in this sort of situation I believe so I tended not to to work that way and also it's 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 quite um, you know I felt quite strange if I was wearing protective gear and then no one else around me was and I, I, I felt uncomfortable about it um, so I, I just chose not to and um, you you know take the risks as they come this photograph here is of a couple of Taliban um, bodies being burnt. They were burnt by American soldiers and uh, for so-called hygiene reasons. Um, this photograph was quite a controversial picture when it came out. It was published in the New York Times and uh, it was uh, world headlines for a, a couple of days when it came out, so the, the Taliban burning incident, um, and questioned um, 
uh, many things, in particular um, cultural insensitivities of Americans burning bodies in the field, which is against Islamic rights um, and against the Geneva Convention. So, and this story, you know, like I said, broke broke the news and uh, um, you know really sort of upset a lot of people and um, but changed policy. And in, in the end, it uh, changed um, U.S. military policy. There is an agenda in that I, I want people to know about Afghanistan. I want people to know. I don't spend half my life on a project that I, you know, I don't feel strongly about. So for me, the, the political situation, the cultural situation has been incredibly um, moving and important to me. I would say my motives are locked in with both. Um, shining a light um, on what's going on and producing um, strong photographs. It would be, um, they, they both go hand in hand really. It's really looking at, um, you know, I guess being the concerned photographer in a way, just keeping your eyes open and trying to um, constantly uh, document um, history and what's going on around you so that's always been my focus um, but at the same time you know I see myself as an artist and I see myself as a someone who wants to produce photography that will stand out you know it's not just snaps it's not just making news it's it's going beyond the news <laughs>